Katrina London is with me. She's a personal injury lawyer with Erwin Mitchell. Welcome to Channel M today. Now, if you don't mind me saying so, personal injury lawyers, I don't know whether they have the greatest press sometimes. They're, uh, they're perceived as people who run after ambulances saying, you can sue, you can sue. Is that unfair? Well, I think that is unfair. <laughs> I think we have had a bad press and... and... Uh, and I think that whilst there were always perhaps some justifications at times, I think the majority of the people who do this work do very important work for yeah. people who are very seriously injured. And when, when local authorities or employers who have responsibilities to people who work for them are in breach of those responsibilities, then I think it's perfectly right that people should bring claims to both to compensate those people and to make sure that health and safety is better for the future. So we do have an important... When did it start work. to improve? I mean, it can always improve a little bit more, but, you know, we can cast our minds about, well, 40 years and so on and so forth. When did people become aware that, hang on a minute, you can't just let a load of lads loose on a building site? You've got to be aware. Well, over the... Probably since the Second World War, there's been a number of regulations, but I think a really important change came in when when the European regulations came yeah. in in the late 80s and early 90s. And that made a big difference where employers had a responsibility to risk assess procedures. And, and although there had been factories acts before which protected people from exposure to dust and unguarded machinery, there was a much more preventative approach. Um, and I think that, that I would say from probably... Second World War, but then 70s, we had the Health and Safety Act in the 80s with the European regulations. And are people, do you think, aware of their rights now as much as they should be? I think there's a lot better knowledge of, out there of what of people have got an entitlement to claim. I think things have improved. You specialise in um, the area of mesothelioma, which That's is uh, the inhalation of asbestos and, and the problems that, that are caused. Is it as dangerous now as perhaps it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago? I mean, there was an advert, for example, that was ruled um, by the Advertising Standards Authority to be misleading because the statistics in it weren't accurate. Are we as aware of asbestos? Is it as dangerous as it was? Well, asbestos is as dangerous as it ever was, and um, the, the deaths will continue to increase for, for probably at least a decade to come before they peak. I mean, asbestos is, it has been banned now, but it's still in many, many buildings, all in this country and across the world. Some countries still mine asbestos and some countries are still exporting asbestos. It's still used? It's still used in some countries, not in this country, but in India, in Zimbabwe, and, and Canada is exporting it. So it's, it's used a in problem. public buildings a long time ago, and public buildings are famously not as renovated as often as they should be. I mean, my wife's a teacher, we've got kids who are in school, should we be concerned? Well, there is one of the most one of the concerns at the moment is asbestos within schools because it was there was a, um, a big building program of schools in the from the forties to the seventies, and asbestos cont materials containing asbestos were used then, and there, there's a and it's the health and executive, executive will identify that will say that there is still a lot of asbestos in schools. I think the, sa the safest way is for it to be removed. I agree. And um, <laughs> I think we all would. We all would prefer that. Um, there's a conflict there between the unions who say that, and which we would all agree with, and the government who are aware of the cost, of course, of, of safely removing well, asbestos. But it's, had it's, we a government minister here to answer that, I'd be interested to see you address it very quickly because we're running out of time. You've done a lot to raise awareness, haven't you? Tell me about the cycle ride, if you can, really quickly. It was it was a ride from Glasgow to Southampton hitting all the asbestos hot spots. And how many were there? There was... How many hot spots? Mm. Oh, I've lost count there. Oh, there are that many. Is that, that, it, is that worrying? We stopped in about uh, ten places, but there was many more than that. But we, we stopped at shipbuilding. We stopped in Glasgow and Barrow um, and obviously Southampton and heavy industry Manchester and Liverpool and shipbuilding there as well. It was to raise awareness of the lack of funding into mesothelioma research, Andy, because that is seriously underfunded. It would only be a few million needed from the government to set up a proper centre for research into mesothelioma and we don't think it would be that hard to find because people don't go to work and expect to die as a result of it and they should be entitled not just for compensation but some proper treatment and even a hope of a cure in the future. So they should. More power to you, Katrina. Thanks very much for your time.